Welcome to Same Spit, Different Face TV, where my opinions is facts, and if you don't like my opinions, you can start your own podcast, and it's free, so don't forget to spit on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification. If you clicked on this video to hear about Young Thug mistrial or deal, I need you to hit that like button now. Young Thug was in a position to where they trying to give him life in jail. They wasn't going to give him a deal. But now after another misstep, now they ended up putting Slime Life Shawty on the stand. Now he was in a tough position because he signed a plea deal when actually inside of the Rico case, he had only like four counts and he didn't really do anything. But this is how dirty they play in the court system. They'll bring people in that they know didn't have anything to do with it. And they'll count on the fact that that person had the least to gain or the most to lose from this situation that this person will flip now when i look at what slime life shorty said on um the stand i don't consider it snitching and here's why when they asked him was ysl considered a gang he said yes but then when they asked him uh how did he join it because they were trying to uh, establish that it's an initiation, like somebody might get jumped in, somebody might have to shoot some. He never admitted to any of that. And he said, I was just a gang. I became a part of the gang by doing music. And they was like, How, when did you become a part of the game? He said, my music started getting better and they just allowed me to be a part of the gang. So when you look at that, <clears throat> From that standpoint, he made the best out of the worst situation. Now, we have to remember that he took an alpha plea. Uh, Gunner took an alpha plea. So when you take an alpha plea, um, uh, you can Google this too. And I did a video about this a long, long time ago. I might actually make that uh, video public again. Ebony K. Williams a long time ago spoke about an alpha plea. But basically, you take an alpha plea and you say, yo, I'm not guilty, but y'all have so much evidence that I believe y'all going to find me guilty in trial. So I'm going to have to just take this plea and take whatever time y'all trying to give me, etc. Right. So when we look at this situation, everything is looking good. Everything is going great from the standpoint of what Slime Life Shawty said on uh on uh, the stand. Now, the other thing that he did, he ended up saying that somebody was in jail. He wasn't supposed to say that. And after he said that the state didn't prep him and then he read free somebody, which he shouldn't have read, which implied that that person was in jail. And to be honest, when a state make these type of mistakes, they're supposed to call a mistrial with prejudice. The state is not supposed to be able to try the case again. But the judge said, well, I don't believe they did it intentionally. This is the second time they've had somebody get on the stage, the state get on the stand, I mean, and say something incorrect that they're not supposed to say on stand. One time you have a police officer say it, and, and then the next time, what do you end up doing? You end up having another witness who's supposed to be a part of the RICO indictment say it. So that's poor management on the part of the state. Now, the thing that I really don't like is that Judge Whitaker said she wouldn't offer um she wouldn't offer a mistrial with prejudice, which means they couldn't try him again, but she would offer a mistrial without prejudice, which means they would be able to try the case again. And I don't like that because it's not your job as the judge to uh see that the state is doing everything right. It's not your job as the judge to make sure that the state is prepping their witnesses correct. It's not your job as the judge to clean up after the state when they make mistakes or tell the states, hey, you guys have all this evidence, but if you condense it down, it would be much easier to do what you're trying to do here. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Judge Whitaker used to be a prosecutor, man. And that'd be the problem. When we sit in these courtrooms, man, it needs to be checks and balances. I know you can go to the appeals court and have somebody see over that. And maybe you can get something back. But in my personal opinion, I believe that somebody told Judge Whitaker, yo, we not letting this case go. Or if they didn't tell her that they implied it to her or if they didn't imply it to her, she just knows the court, the culture of the Georgia's courtroom and the way Georgia's law work. And she's probably thinking, yo, you know, we've had 12 months of this case. We've spent X amount of dollars. There's no way we letting them get out of here without completing this case. Other than that, we just wasted everybody's time and money. Well, actually, that's not her stance to make, but that's basically the stance that she's had each time. She's had a bunch of chances to be able to call for a mistrial. And so now 
It appears that each lawyer is meeting with DA Fonnie Willis and Love in order to have the opportunity to possibly work out a deal. And it seems like everybody's going to get a deal today. Now, the bad part of this situation is that Young Thug, in a case that's definitely beatable, a case that he definitely should have had a mistrial on with prejudice, he may have to plead guilty in order to get back to his life. Now, when you plead guilty, I wonder if it's a possibility, and I don't know the law. If y'all know something about this, drop it down in the comments. But is it a possibility of Young Thug being able to say, hey, um, yeah, I pled guilty, but this is why I pled guilty. Um, I should have never been convicted. I should have had a mistrial a long time ago. And then maybe the appeals court can agree that he should have got a mistrial and now he don't become a felon because if he comes out of this as a felon, what ends up happening is that he's not able to travel the country to do shows and then he's stuck in the U.S. with doing it. And the other thing about it is that I don't like about what the DA did is that YFN Lucci was able to get a deal where he was only going to have to sit in there a term of 10 years and Fonnie Willis wrote something where he would be able to get out of jail um, basically ASAP, um, soon as his first chance was up for parole, she wouldn't mind them letting him out. But YFN Lucci was in the car with somebody. Um, essentially he was, I believe he was the driver. He got into a shootout in which someone died, but she's willing to give him leniency as if he's not in the same type of gang Rico. But when it comes to young thug, nah, we need him and the only option for him is to beat us at trial or to get life. I think that's not fair as well, which kind of leads me to believe that it may be some underlining thing there, some underlining grudge that may be held against Young Thug, but I'll never know that. But anyway, right now we're waiting to see if the judge will give a mistrial. And I think if you the if you the if you're the if you're the uh defendants, if you young thug and the rest of his uh defendants that's on the case with him. You don't want this mistrial because what that does is that gives the prosecutor a chance to go back and maybe tighten up some of those plea deals they gave, make it where, hey, you have to say this. If you don't say that, you know, put more stipulations into that plea deal. And then also, okay, this witness messed up, but now this witness can come back and let's prep them better. And then I, that didn't work on the stand. Let's take this out. Okay. We had this, let's put this in, let's prep this person. So when I look at it in my personal opinion, the best thing for young thug to do is, uh, try to take a deal, but obviously I'm not him and I don't have to live with those consequences, but we'll see what comes out of this. Check out my original Chicago hood movie in the end screen. No time to play fair.